For the first 38 years of my life, I was a Florida boy. I, I was born here, I grew up here, and the only other place I lived other than Orlando was in Melbourne Beach for about a year right after high school. And in my 38th year, I, I ended up moving up to Boston, and then I was in Boston for a while, and then D.C. and Maryland for a while. And while I loved living in another place and I loved being up north, I used to get homesick. And I always looked forward to coming home, especially you know around the holidays as we're kind of starting to get towards that time of year. And I always drove home, so you know driving from D.C. is like 14 hours, and you know it was a long drive where I ate a lot of garbage and you know just listened to books and music. But around the time I got to like South Carolina, started seeing like palm trees, just one or two along the way. And then as you got into Georgia, South Georgia, you started seeing more of them. And then coming up to the Georgia-Florida line, or the Florida-Georgia line, as I like to call it, it really started to look like home. And then once I got, you know, down towards St. Augustine, I would get off of 95 and shoot over and drive down A1A so I could drive next to the beach. And then once I got home, it was, you know, the, the usual thing of spending time with my, my family and my friends and, you know, going to the same places and doing the same things that whenever I came back. And it was a time of, of refreshment for me. It was a homecoming. It was restoration. And it was a time of rejoicing. When I started getting near the Florida-Georgia line, the, the energy would start going and, I, and, you know, the rejoicing would start. Maybe you've experienced that. Maybe you're from somewhere else or you live somewhere else and either going north or going south is coming home for you. And you know that longing for home, the longing for the familiar and the anticipation and the joy of drawing near and the joy of arriving. This is the joy that the prophet Jeremiah looks forward to and promises the people of Jerusalem in today's first reading. Imagine a homecoming, how it would feel if the place you had been and the time you had been there had not been of your choosing. Imagine if you had been forcibly taken away from your home and made to live in another place. Imagine if you had not been allowed to ever to go home. Imagine being forced to live in a strange land and, and learn a strange language and being separated from all you love, even from your religion and your national identity, imagine what finally coming home from that would feel like. And this is the situation of the people of Jerusalem who had been exiled from the land, from the home that God had given them, and they had been taken away into exile in Babylon. And Jeremiah had witnessed all of this. He, he saw the descent of the people into sin. He saw their sometimes careless, sometimes reckless violation of the special covenant that they had with God. He saw Jerusalem overrun by the Babylonians. He saw the temple destroyed and the people carried off as captives. And now he was seeing a vision of the people heading south heading home from that land to the north where they had been in exile. And they're rejoicing. And Jeremiah, he sees this weakened and broken people, this, he says, an immense throng flooding forward, flooding south. They had been led away weeping with grief, and now they're retur returning rejoicing. They're going home. And their relationship with God is being mended. And they're being healed. And they're being restored to their former glory. They're being restored to their land, to their faith, and to their national identity. About five centuries after Jeremiah wrote this vision, St. Mark wrote the passage from the gospel that we hear today. And this story that we hear today reflects and echoes and completes what Jeremiah saw all those years before. You know, Jesus had been 
up in the northern area, up around Galilee and Samaria and Jericho, in places that were far away from Jerusalem, both geographically and spiritually. And as he's moving about, he encounters weak and broken and lost and longing people. We still have a lot of those wandering around. But Jesus sees these people and he teaches them and he heals them and he frees them from their demons and they're restored and they follow Jesus. Today, as we see him, he's leaving Jericho, a city just to the north and east of Jerusalem, and he's bound for that holy city of Jerusalem, and, and he's going to his destiny, his encounter with the cross, and he's followed by a sizable crowd, Mark tells us, kind of like the, the immense throng that Jeremiah saw. And from out on the outer edges of the crowd, someone cries out, Son of David, have pity on me. The blind man, Bartimaeus, recognizes Jesus as the Messiah. He calls him Son of David, the original Messiah. He's a descendant of David who's going to restore the people of Israel, to restore God's people and lead them home to Jerusalem. So people have been waiting for centuries for this. And the crowd around Bartimaeus tries to keep him silent. And, you know, don't bother the teacher. Leave him alone. He's going somewhere. But his persistence pays off. And remember, throughout the Gospels, Jesus tells us about persistence in prayer. Knock and the door will be open. Ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. So Bartimaeus knows this intuitively. And he keeps calling out. And Jesus stops and asks that beautiful question, what do you want me to do for you? Bartimaeus responds, Master, I want to see. And Jesus immediately restores his sight. He doesn't ask him any questions. He doesn't ask him what he's going to do once he has his sight back. He just restores his sight. And Bartimaeus follows him. And so he now is going home. He is healed. He's restored. And whatever is going to happen once they get to Jerusalem, is Bartimaeus going to stay with Jesus once he starts seeing Jesus confronting the religious leaders and going through all he's going to go through? Is he going to abandon Jesus? Is he going to stay with him? We don't know. We never hear anything else about Bartimaeus in the gospel. But for now... He's part of that immense throng, that, that massive crowd of people who have encountered Jesus and who experience his healing, his restorative power, and those who are following him home. Coming to faith in our Lord Jesus Christ is a homecoming. It's, it's a healing for our spiritual and maybe even our physical or emotional maladies. It is our restoration. Some of us return to Jesus after being away from him, maybe for a long time, maybe just for a short while, maybe it took a little detour. Some may have never known him before, but by some wonderful grace of God, they met Jesus, came to know him and to follow him. And I think especially of our catechumens who are preparing for baptism. Some of them are a little bit older, and maybe they never encountered Jesus until later in life. Some may have known about Jesus, known about Jesus since childhood, but maybe they never really encountered him as Messiah, as Lord, as teacher, as healer, as savior, as friend. No matter what, for everyone, Jesus is passing by, always, but especially here and now at this Holy Mass, where we know, we know by faith and by the witness of the immense throng that is around us, both those who are with us today, those who came before us, the church throughout the world, we know that when we are at Mass, 
our Lord Jesus Christ is really present here and now. He's here for us. What do we cry out to him when we're so close to him? What do you want him to do for you? Maybe you've been away from God for a while. Maybe you found yourself in an exile from that place of holiness that God has made for you. Sometimes God might seem far away. God can be silent, absent. Sometimes it can be hard to believe or trust in God. And at times we can be unable or unwilling to see God in our lives. We can be unable or unwilling to see what is good and true and right and go after it. Sometimes we experience pain and weakness or sin from which we seek to be healed. Sometimes we're painfully aware of losses that we want to be restored. Our Lord Jesus Christ is passing by. We can find him in so many places. And one of those places is right over in the reconciliation room where he is present to us. And through the ministry of his church, he forgives and heals us of our sins. He's present here in the altar of the Holy Eucharist where he gives his own self as food and healing medicine for our body and soul. He's always present in the Blessed Sacrament Chapel. He's always there for us to come and just sit and be with him and talk to him and to cry out to him for mercy and healing when we need it. Jesus is passing by, and he asked, just as he asked Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? And like Bartimaeus, we can take courage and we can spring up and tell Jesus what it is that we need from him. And then we can follow him. We can follow him along the way. And that way is the way of healing and hope and restoration. It's the way to our true home, where we will rejoice eternally in the glorious presence of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.